Hello. Sing, O oh Goddess, Achilles' veins, black and murderous, that cost the Greeks incalculable pain, pitched countless souls of heroes into Hades' dark, and left their bodies to rot as feasts for dogs and birds, as Zeus's will was done. This is the beginning of the Iliad. Homer condenses in a few verses the tragedy of war. War has been a driving force, some would argue the driving force of change throughout history. Before we dwell into a war with an apparently trivial pretext, don't forget to subscribe in order not to miss out on our future videos. Going to war over a humble wooden bucket. Next on Random History. In order to understand the political situation in medieval Europe, one has to turn one's attention to the year 476 AD. This year marks the end of the Western Roman Empire. Romulus, the last of the Roman emperors in the West, was overthrown by the Germanic leader Odoacer. He was the first barbarian to rule over Rome. The title of emperor was revived on December the 25th, 800 AD. Then Pope Leo III crowned the Frankish king Charlemagne. Several civil wars and a century after Charlemagne's death resulted in the disappearance of the title from the political landscape once again. It was revived once more, however, by Otto I, king of Germany, in 962. Thus, the Holy Roman Empire was installed, the duration of which was to span over eight centuries. The Holy Roman Emperor ruled over a multi-ethnic complex of territories. The lands under his crown comprised parts of Western, Central and Southern Europe. Its dissolution came in 1806 during the Napoleonic Wars. The Holy Roman Emperor might have been the supreme ruler of the lands, but he was far from unopposed. There was another powerful political actor, the Pope. Papal relations with the Emperor revolved around problems of both practical and theoretical nature. The two autonomous powers were competing for authority over the lives of people. The Church claimed authority over moral decisions. The monarchs, on the other hand, were theoretically concentrating on political matters. The boundaries between the two areas were fuzzy at best. All efforts to clearly define them were largely inconclusive. The situation caused contact and tensions between the two. Tensions grew higher and culminated with the investiture controversy. It was a conflict unfolding between the late 11th century and the early 12th century. At issue was the prerogative to choose and install bishops and abbots of monasteries and the Pope himself. The conflict that started in 1078 ended in 1122 with the Concordat of the Worms. From then on, the Church held the right of selection of bishops who were invested with sacred authority. The bishops were obliged nonetheless to formally acknowledge the authority of the monarch by taking an oath of fealty. In the aftermath of the controversy, factions emerged that either supported the Pope or the Emperor. Italy is a country rich in history mirrored in the countless monuments one can still admire. Italian museums and churches are brimming with works of art and true masterpieces. The history of the Italian peninsula spans for over 3,000 years. Various civilizations have flourished on the Italian soil, the Etruscans and the Greeks, to name a few. The achievements of the Romans and the Renaissance underpin our modern culture and way of life. Italian history is far from serene. Periods of relative tranquility alternate with turbulent times characterized by civil wars or conflicts with outside foes. Italy, as we know it today, took its unified form in 1861 with the formation of the Kingdom of Italy. Until then, it was fragmented. In 773, Charlemagne crossed the Alps 
and they invaded the kingdom of the Lombards in northern Italy. From this point on, the then called Kingdom of Italy, comprising large chunks of northern and central Italy, was part of the Holy Roman Empire. So the competition between popes and emperors for the minds and souls of the people spread to Italy as well. Medieval society in the Italian peninsula during the 11th and 12th centuries had become increasingly dualistic. Both sources of authority were recognized and attempts were made to reconcile them. Alas, these attempts were never crowned with success. Far from it. In 1176, the Emperor Frederick I, also known as Barbarossa, was defeated by the Lombards, allies of Pope Alexander III at Legnano. This led to the signature of the Peace of Venice in 1177 between the Pope and his allies and the Emperor. In the aftermath of this peace treaty, numerous city-states were formed in Italy. They were largely independent from the Germanic Emperor. Other territories in the Italian peninsula were under the direct sovereign rule of the Pope. They were called Paper States. The Emperor, however, still held sway in the politics of the region. Two rival parties were formed. The Ghibellini or Ghibellines were the imperial party and the Guelfi or Guelphs supported the Pope. The supporters of the Ghibellini tended to come from those whose wealth was based on agricultural estates. The Guelphi, on the other hand, tended to come from wealthy mercantile families. Local interests largely dictated whether a city was to be Ghibellini or Guelphi. Broadly, cities who felt threatened from the Emperor tended to be Guelphi. Those who perceived the Papal States as more of a threat tended to be Ghibellini. Smaller cities tended to be Ghibellini if the nearby larger city was Guelphi. Even in the same city, however, the political allegiance differed from guild to guild. These allegiances in local, regional or group level were very dynamic and any upheaval could lead to immediate change of party. All this depicts the fluid and fragmented Italian political environment of medieval times. These political and social conditions provided a fertile ground for conflicts between rival city-states. Skirmishes between opposing cities were far from unusual and they frequently turned into full-out war. The region of Emilia-Romagna is situated in the northeast section of the Italian peninsula. It is nowadays one of the most developed regions in Europe. Apart from being an economic powerhouse, Emilia-Romagna encompasses no less than 11 UNESCO heritage sites. The city of Ravenna is the former Roman Empire capital. In 2018, Emilia-Romagna was named by the travel guide Lonely Planet as the best place to see in Europe. Modern Bologna, two cities about 37 kilometers apart, which is equal to 23 miles, were relentless rivals during medieval times. For over 300 years, they faced one another in various battlefields claiming various lands. This is why the territory between the two cities was riddled with towers and castles of various sizes. Modena was pro-emperor, which means they supported the Ghibellini party, whereas Bologna was pro-pope supporting the Guelphi party. In 1296, Bologna invaded the lands of Modena, conquering parts of them, with the support of the Pope. Bologna had revised its military objectives, aiming to expand its territory. This was a necessity after the rapid population growth of the city in the previous years. One of the reasons for the growth was the spread of the fame of the local university. It was the first university of the Western world and now the oldest university in continuous operation in the world, founded in 1088. The great influx of scholars and students put pressure on the city's infrastructure and its capability of providing sustenance to its inhabitants. The political situation in Modena at the time was a bit murky. A power vacuum left contenders fighting amongst themselves for the control of the city each of them promising military victories over the hated city of Bologna. Conditions were ripe 
for war. Tensions were high between Bologna and Modena in the year 1325. Military activity along the ever-changing borders of the territories of the two cities was intense. In July, Bologna invaded the territory of Modena, plundering the countryside. In September, it was the turn of Modena to invade the lands of Bologna. An important castle was conquered by the Modenesi. As a result, the castle of Zappolino was the last outpost protecting Bologna from the enemy. The time for skirmishes was over, it was time for a decisive battle. November the 15th of the year 1325 was the date of the battle that came to be known by the name of Battle of Zappolino. The army of Modena was vastly outnumbered. Bologna fielded about 30,000 infantrymen and 2,000 horsemen. Modena, on the other hand, fielded just 5,000 infantrymen and 2,000 horsemen. At first glance, the numbers were overwhelming and Modena stood little chance of winning. But, as it often happens, numbers can be deceiving. Only the horsemen of Bologna were professional soldiers. Their infantry was a ragtag army of ill-equipped and poorly trained men. Their morale was quite low since they were hastily drafted and their motivation was dubious. The infantry of Modena, on the other hand, was well armed and trained. It included mercenaries from Verona and Germany that were armed to the teeth. The battle was relatively brief. It lasted about two hours. The army of Bologna was chased into the castle of Zappolino and the walls of Bologna itself. It sustained heavy losses. According to some accounts, 2,000 men perished. The Modenesi did not try to breach the walls of either of the fortifications of their enemies. They limited themselves to organizing festivities and games under the watchful eyes of the people of Bologna. According to popular tradition, at the end, to add insult to injury, they left taking as trophy an empty wooden bucket. They thus wanted to underline the fact that Modena was rich in water, pouring out of artesian wells. The inhabitants of Bologna, on the contrary, were obliged to dig deep wells and use buckets to draw water from them. To this day, the city of Modena holds the aforementioned bucket in the basement of Torre della Ghirlandina. One can see a replica of it in Modena's town hall. In January of 1326, a mere three months after the battle, a treaty was signed by the belligerents. Modena returned the castles and the lands conquered to Bologna. The leaders of Modena had probably received some kind of kickback. As a result, the only gain for the inhabitants of Modena was a stolen wooden bucket. 2,000 men lost their lives for something so trivial. The whole puzzle would have been nothing but a footnote in the history of medieval Italy if it wasn't for a poem. The 17th century Italian poet Alessandro Tassoni wrote a poem published in 1622. It was entitled La Secchia Rapita. This translates as The Abducted Bucket. It is a mock heroic epic poem. The Italian term is eroicomico. The Battle of Zappolino is described in an allegorical way in its verses. Though it begins in the epic manner, it ends in some hilarious absurdity. The tragedy and the futility of the battle is hence underlined. And this was the story behind the war for a wooden bucket. We would love to read what you have to say in the comments below. Stick around for a few more seconds because a couple of videos are going to pop up that might interest you. And if you feel so inclined, please like, share and subscribe in order not to miss out on our future videos. Until the next time, keep learning!